Hello there. I think it's about time that somebody took a deep dive into polychords and the guitar. So I've decided to do that in a little series of videos and uh, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from it. And if you're here watching, maybe so will you. Polychords are weird, complicated, often super dissonant, and often quite difficult to play on the instrument. And we only have a finite amount of them available to us on the guitar. So I think it can be a good idea, in order to wrap our heads around these chords, to use something familiar as a starting point. Let's take a basic 2-5-1 progression in C major, like we've heard in a million songs before. Now, let's see how we can express the same progression using polychords. So I'm starting out with this E minor over D minor chord. So we basically have our second inversion D minor on the lower strings and we have an E minor triad on the open top three strings. Then for the dominant G7 I'm playing an D flat over G chord which is definitely the most dissonant and tense voicing in this progression. And I'm resolving that to a D major over C major chord like this. So why does this work? I think it works anyways. Well, one way to look at it is that the lower chords resolve naturally into each other. The lower chords are still just our basic 2 5 1, D minor, G, C. The upper chords also resolve quite beautifully into each other. I think. Um, so that's just D minor to, sorry, E minor to D flat to D. So we have a lot of very smoothly voice leading chords. Now on the guitar, polychords can often sound quite muddy when we just strum them. So we can use a few different strategies to make them come alive a little bit more and make it easier for the listener to perceive all the different voices. Now, an obvious choice is just to arpeggiate them instead of strumming them. Another choice that I like a lot is to separate them in the same way you would separate the voices if you were an orchestral composer, say. Which means you split up the voices between different sections of the orchestra. So you have a difference in register and a difference in timbre, which makes the listener perceive two different harmonic movements going on at the same time. So, for example, if we were going to do this on the guitar, we could play the lower voicings with a darker, mellower sound, like this. While playing the higher voices in a much brighter sound to accentuate the difference between them, like this, for example. So this was an example of polychords used in a musical setting in the context of a song. Now, 
I'll continue to make little videos like this, exploring how to use polychords in different chord progressions. And if you like this kind of content, you're welcome to subscribe and click the little bell notifications button thingy that everybody tells you to do or not. Um, yeah, hope to see you next time. Bye.